Welcome to the 30th video on beginning CSS and part two of the series. Now part one compromised the first 29 videos. And so if you've gotten this far, congratulations, you now have a very good understanding on how to style HTML elements. But now we're gonna take the next step. And what does that involve? Well, that involves positioning our elements. Now we've kind of looked at that briefly, but now we're gonna expand our view of positioning elements. And that is how elements relate to each other. And so we're gonna spend the next five to six videos looking at positioning. Now in this video, we're gonna take a look at block and inline elements and the difference between those two types. Then we will take a look at floating elements then absolute positioning, and then finally fixed positioning. And by the end of this, you'll know exactly how to place your elements where you want them on your web page. And then once we're done with that, we're gonna take everything that we've learned from part one and part two and start putting together some really awesome professional looking layouts. So let's take a look at what are block and inline elements. And we're gonna take a break from coding. We've kind of been working on that web page uh, in the first 29 tutorials. But in this one, I created a special uh, web page. Now, obviously, this isn't a web page that we would do in reality, but I really wanted block elements and inline elements to stand out for you because I want you to understand the concept. So don't worry about coding. You can just sit back and enjoy the show. And again, it's just important to understand the concept of an inline and a block element. And actually, we've been using them all along, but since we're going to start talking about positioning and how elements are rendered in the browser, it's very important that first you understand what a block and an inline element is. So we've got this web page that I've made here, again, to show the concepts. And then uh, here's, of course, the HTML, and here is the style sheet. Now, let's start first with a block element. Now, elements are divided into two very basic types. You guessed it, a block element and an inline element. Let's start first with a block element. Now, we've been dealing with block elements. The header is a block element. The paragraph HTML element is a block element. The div element is a block element. So we've been dealing with them. Now, a block element is a major structural element and it extends all the way from the left to the right side of the page. The browser will paint this block element all the way from the left to the right. And since we have no width in here, if you take a look at this header one element, it is stretched all the way from the left to the right. And what's nice about this is if I expand this out, it will keep the element correctly sized. And here's the important point. The block element takes up its own space all the way from the left to the right. It doesn't share it. And you can see our block element right here. Here's the H1. The browser came down, found this H1 element, and it painted it first here. And then it hit a second block element and painted the paragraph right here because the paragraph is a block element. So it too will be painted all the way from the left to the right because we didn't put a width. Now, let's say we decided to go ahead and put a width in here and let's do that. And then let's save this and we will refresh this. You can see now that it cuts it off and you'll see that it starts from the left and moves to the right. And if I expand this out, you can see that the paragraph element still continues to expand, but the header block element does not because we said this is only 300 pixels. And again, elements, whether they're block or inline actually, always start from the left to the right. Now we could actually plant this to the right and that involves positioning. We'll get to that in the next several videos. So let's go ahead and put this back and let's get rid of the width because we want everything to naturally expand. And let's save this and we'll hit this refresh and there you can see it naturally expands all the way so again it paints the first block element and then there is a line break which is right here and then it will paint the second block element and again i didn't put widths in any of these block elements so they will all naturally expand now this is also referred to as the flow and that is when we don't interrupt anything that is when we don't put any width or we don't try to position this element the browser will just naturally expand that element out and that is actually not a bad way to do things when you can actually use the natural flow of css that is actually the preferred way to do it now that won't always be the case um in fact you know we may have a, a div 
section that we need to have um, as a sidebar, which will take up just an area of half the screen, then we need to start putting in widths and absolute positions, and we'll get to that in, in future videos. But whenever you let the browser do the work and let it naturally fill in, you always get the most reliable results doing that. So again, whenever you can do that, that's a good way to have your element rendered. So again, we paint the first block element, and a line break is put in here, and then it came down and it found the paragraph, and there was no width, so it again, it expanded this all the way to the end of the screen. It found the third block and painted this element. And the key here, look at this, it's top down, so they're not put side by side. And once again, there's a line break, and then the next block element is rendered. And now there's another line break, and then the next block element is rendered. It's done in a top-down manner. Now let's go down to this div2. Now this is another block element, but you want to notice something in here? I nested a P element inside this div element. But look at this. They're both block elements, so the paragraph is also rendered all the way to the end of the screen. It doesn't change the fact that it's a block element, the fact that the paragraph is inside the div. It will be expanded all the way out. You can see that. And so that's the other important point I want to make. You can nest block elements inside block elements. And that's why I put this border around here so you could see this. This thing expands all the way to the end. Even though it's inside the div 2, the paragraph itself is a block element and it too will expand all the way to the end because I didn't put any widths in any of these elements. So you can see how this works. And take a look. A line break was, was created here and another paragraph was placed in here and it expanded out too. So it's the same concept even when you nest block elements inside block elements. So keep that in mind. Okay, so now I think you have a pretty good understanding of what block elements do. Actually, you're going to understand them even better when we look at inline. Now, inline elements are span elements, which we dealt with a few videos ago, and images. That's actually a inline element. Now, here's the first one that we hit down here. And let's actually go to, I think I placed them right here. Now, I want you to look at this very closely. And I, I hope you like my little quote here that says, I'm in line. These are stacked side by side. Take a look at that. That's the major difference between an inline element and a block. A block, as we said, expands all the way to the end, but the inline element does not. It will actually size accordingly to the content. So this first one is the size of the picture. This second one is the size of the picture. And once it's done, it'll just stack the next one right by it side by side. It does not go top down. Now you might ask, well, why is this image below this image over here? Well, it ran out of space, so it'll start on the left and then work its way to the right. Kind of the way a block element does, the only difference, like I said, it will stack the inline elements side by side by side, and you can see that. Now, if we go down here, these pictures are actually outside of this div3 block element, but it's still the same concept, right? They're side by side by side. Take a look at that. And they'll keep going as long as they can fit everything in. Now, if I expand this out, suddenly there's enough space and it'll put these images in here. So you see how that works too. If I expand the browser window out, everything can fit in. But as soon as I start minimizing it, it has to start the second image on a new line. So that's how that works. And of course, everything gets the box model still, right, that we talked about. And if we take a look at the span, it does exactly the same thing as the image. It also is stacked side by side by side. And uh, let's put a few more in here and you'll see it. It'll just keep stacking them side by side until it runs out of space. It'll hit the next line. So if we hit refresh here, you can see here that these are given a new line because we didn't have enough space right here. Now, another good way to think of the difference between inline and block is that look at the span. It's kind of covering the area of the text or the covering the area of the image, whereas the block element is a major structural element. It expands all the way to the end of the page. So that's one good way to look at the difference between an inline element and a block element. So I think you guys have a good initial understanding of the difference between a block and an inline element. However, there are some subtle nuances to this concept, and we will get to that in the next video when we continue on with the block and the inline element.